Hi, this is Ryan Lawler. I'm here with TechCrunch TV. Today I'm in Dropbox's office. I'm here with uh, Mailbox founder, uh, Gentry Underwood, and you have a new app being released today. Uh, tell me about it. Yeah, we're excited today to be releasing uh, Mailbox for iPad. So we've taken uh, all the functionality that people love in the Mailbox for iPhone uh, app and we've ported it over to the iPad uh, front end, so it's a, a very similar experience, but modified for these larger screens that um, some of us use every day. Okay, cool. So tell me what is the biggest difference? Obviously, you have a lot more screen real estate to deal with right now. Um, on the phone, you kind of just use it in uh, portrait mode. Yep. Um, how's this work? Yeah, so the iPad itself is an interesting design challenge. It sits sort of halfway between a mobile device and a laptop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sometimes we use them like luxuriously large phones, mm -hmm. and other times we use them almost as laptop replacements. So that changes a little bit what people need to do around a mail client. Mm -hmm. Our goal was to create an experience that was as fast and fluid for processing mail as you might do on a phone. So very quickly being able to simply go through and triage your messages like you can on Mailbox for iPhone, mm -hmm. but also leaving enough real estate for those times when you've got a keyboard up, maybe it's a glass one, maybe it's a third party keyboard, and you're actually trying to use an iPad like you might use a laptop and actually get through messages in a more intentional way. So trying to find a marriage between those two situations and a single app that did both. Okay, and so uh, this only works in, uh, I guess, uh, landscape mode, right? Yeah, we started with landscape mode because that's where the, the mode that uh, most keyboard attachments mm -hmm. support. and. Uh, so just in terms of focusing on getting out to market quickly, we, we started there. We'll almost certainly extend to uh, portrait mode as well over time, but it was just a good place for us to begin. Okay, and so you're almost thinking about this as like a, an app for like laptop replacement or? It sits in a funny place. I mean, uh, people who use iPads use them sometimes on the couch or lying in bed or casually as a, you know, it's famously a consumption device, and mm -hmm. I think there's a case there where you can quickly go through your mail and like you might on your phone, having a couple minutes here or there, you can quickly sort through the messages you need to deal with later, and pass off the ones that you never need to see again, and maybe quickly reply to one or two mm -hmm. uh, that need your attention right away. But also, a, a, a large number of people use these as, as laptop replacements, particularly if people are on the road a lot and want to take advantage of uh, the lighter weight, the longer battery life, no need to plug it in during the day. And for those people, we wanted to also be able to create an experience that was uh, as good or better than they might find on a on their own laptop. So we really had to kind of try and find a way to service both uh, users at the same time. Okay, cool. Well, let's take a look at it, and you can sort of show me how to use this. Cool. So if you've used Mailbox before, the look and feel should be pretty familiar. We mm -hmm. actually spent a fair amount of time trying to create an experience that was consistent and familiar from a visual perspective with what people were using today. So you can very easily swipe in either direction to engage the snoozes, uh, or you can pass things off to your archive. Uh, we, we use this pane over here for conversations, just like mm -hmm. you might expect. Um, the, the drawer is still there and available. There's some little changes, like the fact that when you move between lists, we keep the drawer open, so if you want to focus on processing, you can mm -hmm. do that. Uh, but you can also pull the thing back together and uh, interact with an individual message. We've allocated a fair bit of space here uh, to uh, allow for longer form composition. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel quite as much as a chat bubble like it might uh, on your phone. And we have support for uh, things like re uh, reorganizing the keyboard to make sure that the cursor is always visible. Um, lots of little touches that we feel like create an overall experience that's fluid and just works. Okay, cool. And uh, as you think about this, um, you were talking about maybe doing portrait a little bit later. Um, so sort of what might that look like? Well, I think one of the reasons we've waited a little bit to, to support portraits is we want to be just as thoughtful about the way that we use that orientation. Mm -hmm. We've spent a lot of time iterating back and forth on different, you could imagine, for example, having a a version of the drawer that was always open, right. uh, less space here for the conversation. And these little details, they might seem small, but they add up to an overall experience that's more complicated or more noisy. Um, we'll, we'll be looking very closely at a similar set of constraints as we're, as we're focusing on the portrait orientation, make sure that we can build the best experience for both. So it'll just take us a bit of time, but um, All it's right. pretty important we get it right. Now that you've got iPhone, you've got iPad, uh, what comes next? Is Android next? Uh, are you looking at desktop? Well, we don't really tend to speak about the, uh, <laughs> the future. specific orders of the future, but I will say that a lot of people ask us often for an Android app. We hear a lot of requests for desktop apps as well, and uh, 
we're, we're going as fast as we can to get Mailbox on as many devices and support for as many email providers as we can. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, thanks for showing us the app, and uh, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me.